about these stories that came out that you've got cancer and lung cancer and then you were poisoned and these matrix attacks. Yeah, so the Are you planting these stories? No. Are they making these things no. up? No, so the cancer thing is interesting because by Romanian law, every 30 days to extend the arrest, there has to be new information. They can't extend the arrest based on the previous information. So they put together all this garbage case and they arrested me for 30 days. To keep me another 30 days, they have to find something during that 30 day arrest period to keep me for the second month. But of course there's nothing to find. So when I was having uh, medical scans in Dubai, a scar, a dark spot was identified on my lung and I had follow-up tests booked for February. So when, after the first 30 days, I called up my PA and she said, are you coming to Dubai? I said, well, yeah, if they let me go at the end of these 30 days, I'll come to Dubai for my medical tests. They took that conversation and shown it and used it in court saying, I'm trying to flee the country and trying to escape the judicial system as motivation for the second month's arrest. And the judge agreed and locked me in jail because I said that I would go to a medical appointment if I was free. And they used that as proof I'm trying to run because they had nothing else. And the judge agreed it for some reason and kept me in jail. Then everything in Romania leaks. So it leaked that I had this medical thing in Dubai. I had a problem with my lungs. And then there's a hospital here and I decided to go to the hospital here and have it looked at because although I was not concerned, I thought, you know what? Although it's difficult to do procedures in jail, I have time for once in my life. So I decided to go to the hospital here in Romania and Romania does have some private healthcare, which is actually very high quality. It's not as poor as people think it is. And I went to a private hospital and I knew it wasn't cancer. I knew it wasn't. I sat down with the doctor and said, we're really concerned about this dark spot in your lung. I said, it's not cancer. He said, how do you know? I said, that's just not my life path. It's not my story. You told him that? Yeah. <laughs> the doctor was like, okay, but we have to investigate. He said, we can investigate, but it's just not my story. It's not cancer. I have zero percent. When BBC came, did, did you have guys like watching every move they yeah. were making? You had to almost feel like one-on-one, -on -one, right? One Somebody's counts. watching everything they're yeah. doing. Everything. You have to do it, right? Yeah. You can't be, yeah. you have to be overly paranoid and skeptical with these guys. If they want to hear about, you know, Ricky Tang's crime lord, if they want to hear more about the crime syndicate in Hong Kong, I can tell them all about it, because Carter and Lee is going to get under control. But, but um, yeah, I, I mean, this is the thing. This is actually a really interesting point, which I'll go into before I finish the lung story. So I went to the doctors here. In Romania, everything leaks. It leaked out to the press. I had this mark on my lungs. I was supposed to go to Dubai. They denied me going to Dubai. They said that's enough reason to hold me and keep me in jail, which is absolutely insane, all because I also had a phone call about a medical procedure. It's crazy. But they were always going to keep me anyway and find some reason. I went there, I had a bronchioscopy. Have you ever had one of them? <sighs> Bro. I wouldn't call it painful, but it's certainly horrible. So they put a camera in your lung. So it's not that, it's down your throat, but it's in your lung. It's not down your throat, it's into the airway. So you're trying to vomit and you're trying to cough and you can barely do either. And they're moving this camera around inside. It's extremely unpleasant. Even it the, sucks. I had it three years ago in Dallas for the whole allergy thing. That did I you have wanted. a bronchioscopy? Yeah, they had to knock you up. It's terrible. Yeah. You've had the yeah, same absolutely. procedure. Were you awake or asleep? No, they gave me anesthesia, so I was, uh, I was asleep. Oh, bro, here. What was, were you? I was awake. Yeah. Wide awake. Yeah. Oh, I was wide awake. Sounds exciting. Yeah. yeah. It was, they gave me this, uh, uh, they, they tried to numb your throat a bit, and then they gave it to me, and the doctors all around me. It's kind of interesting because when something is in your mouth and you're choking, you want to grab it, right? So you're on a chair, and you're, chain, you're like tied to the chair, so you can't move your hands. So you're like tied to the chair, and you're like this, and they put this thing down your throat, this camera and you're trying to vomit and you're trying to cough, but they can't move the camera when you're coughing. So even the guard, the armed guard who took me, the police officer, the guy, he was in the corner of the room and even he was, I could see on his face, he was like, fucking hell. And I've, I don't even want to reenact it because it's, it's probably so horrible to look at, but you're, you're just like, like, you're trying to vomit, you're trying to cough, you're like, your face is bright red, you can't breathe. And they're like, stop coughing, stop coughing, stop coughing. And you have to try and stop coughing for like two seconds so they can adjust the camera a bit. It's the worst 20 minutes of my life, it was horrible. They finish that and they go, okay, well, the good news is there's precisely zero smoking damage on your lungs and your lungs are perfect, but the lesion, whatever it is, is on the outside of your lungs. It's not on the inside of your lungs. You couldn't see anything. So I completed that procedure, went back to jail. That was a nice evening. Um, horrible. Anyone has a bronchioscopy? Yeah, go to sleep. Don't stay awake. Horrible. Um, then they said, we have to find it. We have to put, an, we have to get a biopsy from the outside of your lungs. So we have to put a needle through your back, a needle like this long through your back, through your rib cage, to your lung, a CT guided biopsy it's called, and take a piece of it and then pull the needle back out and then do a biopsy on the piece. Now, they're like, this is an operation. Do you want to have it while you're in jail? Because I'm, the bronchioscopy wasn't much to recover from. I had a really sore throat, whatever, whatever. 
but this is an operation. Do you want to have it while you're in jail? And I was like, well, why not? I'm in jail. I have time. I can't recover, but I have time. So I went for my CT guided biopsy. They put you on your front. They, get, they show you the needle. It's like this long. And then they, they, they stick it in you, and then they scan you with the biopsy, and they try and see where the mark is, and they adjust the needle, and they scan it. It's like 30 minutes of them shoving this needle in you, trying to get to the right point. And eventually, they uh, did it, did the biopsy, and they said, uh, yeah, it's, it's benign. Some lesion I might have had from when I had, I had pneumonia when I was a kid or something is benign. And that's what I told you. I knew that cancer wasn't my life path. I knew it wasn't. But obviously, rumors spread like wildfire. 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 Everybody in the States. Especially because I smoke. Especially because I smoke all the time. Right. But, but it was actually very refreshing to hear. I have zero smoking damage in my lungs. Zero. I was like, there's zero? I mean, I, I'll accept a little bit. <laughs> I'll take a little bit. But I think it's because I train every single day. I work out every single day. I train hard every single day. And I think... You know, you, you burn it off. A couple cigars here and there are not a big deal. It's not cigarettes. I think cigars are better than cigarettes. I also believe nicotine is a super drug, so I'm not going to stop. I think nicotine and caffeine. A super drug? 100%. What does that mean? Nicotine and caffeine are what I run on. 100, 100 that's all I run on. Coffee's for closers, bro. Tell them. <laughs> Tell them. <laughs> I'm the only one that, that drinks coffee between the two of us. Oh, really? By the way, you know who, uh, who talked about nicotine? Tucker Carlson talked about nicotine. Right? Have you seen that no. when he talks about nicotine where he starts his days off, his day off with nicotine? Or, fire, yeah. 100%, fire yeah. blood. I, I, I have about 10 to 15 cups of coffee a day and two or three cigars a day, and I only eat once a day. And it's funny, because people look 10 at my to 15. cups of coffee a day, minimum. minimum. Wow. Fi but you don't do drugs. Zero drugs. You'll, do, you'll have a sip of alcohol every once in a while. I used to, I haven't had alcohol in nine months, I've quit. But you're running on caffeine and nicotine. and nicotine. It's funny because people look at my physique when I put pictures up and they're like, what's your meal plan? I'm like, bro, cigars and coffee. <laughs> coffee That's and cigars. Wild. Coffee and cigars. I eat once a wow. day. I eat once a day. I what eat, time? I eat dinner only. That's it? Only eat dinner and 18. So you do intermittent fasting for every 18 day. hours? What? Yeah. And 80 to 90% of my calories are meat. That's it. I'll just have like three steaks for dinner. Now, how much of that is genetics? How much is that like? The, I'm not sure if it's genetics, yeah. but that's just how I feel best. I feel best when, if I, if I smoke and drink coffee all the time, I feel hungry, which motivates me, and I feel energetic. It's energetic hungry. That's how I like to feel when I'm working. I want to be hungry. If I eat, I'm tired. Life's too good if I eat. I'm in my mansion. I've just eaten. She's beautiful. I'm going to bed. No, but if, but if I don't, yeah, but if I don't eat, I'm like, maybe, I wouldn't say angry, but I like to have that tinge of, irritableness. Does that make sense? I don't know. Maybe I sound crazy. When it's how I get things done. It's how I get life done. It's just how I... cups of coffee a day, oh, three wow. cigars, and you eat once a day. That's right, yeah. And you train every day. I train every day, yeah. And it's working. Well, working, working for you. It's how I feel best. It's I don't know if I, if you wrote a book on uh, Tate's diet, if that book would do well. <laughs> well, I had, I had, well, this is interesting because I had a blood test when I was in hospital for yeah. all these things and my testosterone level, I'm not going to pretend to be an expert on male hormones because I'm not, I don't understand them. I don't know what measurement it's in, but it's, it was between nine and 27 is the testosterone, the testosterone level, the mark it can be between nine and 27, the normal range. I've never taken a steroid in my life. I don't inject anything. I don't take any pills, nothing. And I was 32. I was above the normal scale and I'm 36 years old. It's supposed to be going down. So whatever I'm doing, I'm sticking to it. What was your diet and your regimen while in jail? There was no Cigarette, coffee? Or there, you... Oh, I had coffee and cigarettes. Don't worry, bro. I had those. Really? I spent my commissary money on coffee and cigarettes. I had coffee and cigarettes and one meal a day. Same. So there was commissary money. Yeah. So we had Who coffee. you that? Yeah. So uh, a friend of mine put money on my account. So I was a rich guy in jail because in Romanian jail, most people haven't got money. Right? Rich I was guy rich. In jail. I was rich. <laughs> There's a limit to how much you can buy, but I was spending the maximum. So I had plenty of cigarettes. Coffee. I actually quit coffee, but now we're talking about coffee, and then I want to go back to the point you made earlier, but I quit coffee for the first 30 days in jail, because I've never, I've never not been caffeinated. My experience of life is caffeinated. <laughs> caffeinated human, right? If I'm awake, it's caffeine. So I'm like, I don't need energy now. I'm in jail. So I quit caffeine and, and all coffee for 30 days to see if there's any tangible benefits, and I can confirm to the world that there are none. Zero. I did not sleep any better. I did not go to sleep any easier. I did not dream anymore. Nothing, absolutely nothing good happened except I was tired all day. It was garbage. I was like, give me my coffee back. I went back to my 15 coffee, cups of coffee a day. That's, that's pretty your wild to have that much coffee. The last time I drank coffee, I was 25. We have really? one friend. Literally. We have one every, friend that drinks almost as much Mario coffee. Mario drinks as much as Shout you. Out to and by the way, everybody around me loves coffee, yeah. including my 11-year-old son, Tico. Yeah. He, he, him and his mom got into an argument the other day because she didn't want to take him to Starbucks. He's like, what do you mean? It's like, I want some coffee. He's like, you're not having coffee yeah, yeah. at 11 years old. Anyways, but it's working for you. It's working for your body. Correct. Sometimes when you, when you find a, 
diet or a combination that that hits your body well you'll know it you'll feel it and, and, and you have to know your body the correct, best correct i think there's no perfect diet for everybody i Everyone's agree it's slightly different i agree and that's just and and i think you are what you eat to a degree and it also depends the mental model you want to operate under some if i want to operate under comfort i certainly wouldn't eat the way i eat i, I do it because i particularly want to operate under a degree of irritability and high energy and hunger i like feeling hungry i don't like feeling full i like being hungry all the time Minect is an application which allows you to take a minute to connect with influencers from all around the world. My name is Andrew Tate, and I'm available to speak directly to you on Minect. So if you like that clip, click right here to watch another, or if you want to watch the entire SauceCast, click right here.